example four. Why do some antibiotics that target bacterial cells also affect mitochondria and chloroplasts? So it is true that there are antibiotics that are meant to just target bacterial cells, but they, they have also been shown in the lab to affect mitochondria and chloroplasts. And the reason for that is because chloroplasts and mitochondria have structural similarities to bacterial cells. So similarities between bacteria and mitochondria and chloroplasts. That would be a reason. For example, the ribosomes. If an antibiotic is targeting bacterial ribosomes, these are 70S ribosomes. So I'd expect the antibiotic to affect the bacteria and the mitochondria and chloroplasts, but it's going to leave the other ribosomes in the eukaryotic cell alone because those have a different structure. They're ADS. Other similarities, remember, are the DNA. It is circular. The DNA of mitochondria, bacteria, and chloroplasts are all circular. Size, mitochondria and chloroplasts are smaller, eukaryotic cells are larger. So these similarities could cause an antibiotic to affect all three cell types. How is this relevant to the endosymbiosis theory of eukaryotic origin? Well, the endosymbiotic theory states that organelles from the eukaryotic cell are a result of a relationship and the engulfment of smaller aerobic bacteria by larger anaerobic bacteria. So uh, there was a larger prokaryotic anaerobic cell. It engulfed a smaller prokaryotic aerobic cell. And eventually, over time, evolution, this became a eukaryotic cell, and this smaller bacterial cell became mitochondria, chloroplasts, organelles within the cell. And the fact that mitochondria and chloroplasts are similar to bacterial cells provides support for this endosymbiosis theory of eukaryotic origin. Thanks for visiting educator.com, and that concludes this lecture on subcellular structure.